who's the head of my life. I give honor to my pastors, the angels of this house. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. I give honor to all of my fellow members uh, of the ministry, all of the ministers. And I give a... Um, Welcome to all of my saints and friends. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I just want to say we're having a little technical difficulties, but God is still good. He's in the midst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about it. Glory, Glory, Glory to God. God. Are you excited about it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. The songwriter said, I love God. What about you? You don't love God? I love God. Hallelujah. Because yeah. God is my Jehovah Shammah, yeah. my mighty, mighty shepherd. He's a friend in need, a friend indeed. He's um, a burden bearer, a heart fixer. Yeah. Glory to God. Who would love God? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I lost my train of thought a little bit there, but that's okay. That's all right. The devil is busy. As a matter of fact, the devil was busy last night, mm -hmm. but um, I I ran back and forth to the bathroom all night, and I, I thought to myself, I, I have to make myself think that this is an attack, yeah. because I don't normally think I'm used to doing everything myself. I used to be a single mom, and so I think I got to fix this. What can I do to fix this? But then when I caught myself, I laid hands and prayed for myself. Amen. I didn't call the pastor. I started to call the pastor and say, Pastor, I may not make it. But um, the Spirit said, no, you're going to make it. Yeah. Don't call the pastor and tell him that you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. So uh, here I am. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. The title of my sermon today is the hand of the Lord. Right. The hand of the Lord. There's a saying that goes, don't change a winning team. We've all heard expressions or statements like this before. Don't change a winning team. If you've ever owned a major sports team, you know this to be the bitter truth. Because the minute you sell a team member or you sell the team, they move on to become world-class winners. Glory to God. There's another saying that goes, know which side of your bread is butter. You're probably more familiar with they know which side of the bread is butter. Glory to God. And one that says, we can't change the cards that we're dealt, just how we play them. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever played poker, you know this to be the absolute truth. Glory to God. There's also a saying that goes, the winning hand. Or they have the winning hand. The Bible is full of these types of idiomatic phrases and statements. We're familiar with um, a, 
a saying in the Bible that goes, the hand of the Lord. If I stick with the hand of God, I always stick with the hand of God, which is the victorious hand of the Lord. The hand of God is mighty. He is our source. He's a, um, his hand is a mind regulator, a burden bearer, a resource, our shield and protection. That's the hand of the Lord. Yeah. The hand of the Lord is deadly against our enemies. That's the hand of the Lord, our winning hand. If I stick with the hand of the God, with the hand of God, I'm on the winning team. My mind is at peace. My bread is well buttered, and I have the victory. I have power and authority, and I have the winning hand. That's the hand of the Lord. The phrase, the phrase, the hand of the Lord, refers to the sovereign power of God. God may not have a hand of flesh and bone, but his hand is omnipotent, omnipresent, unchanging, compassionate, loving, merciful, sustaining, tender, incomparable, and mighty. The statement, the hand of the Lord may be a man may say, nonetheless, it's a very true and potent statement. The Bible instructs us to watch and pray, to cast all of our cares upon God, and to humble ourselves under God's merciful and unchanging hand. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Peter 5 and 5, 6 through 7. And it reads, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride, so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service. At the appropriate time, casting all your cares all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns, once and for all, on him. For he cares about you with the deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. And I like uh, verse 6 in the uh, NIV, which says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. I'm going to take this opportunity to prophesy into your life today. Due time has come. Due time has come. It's your season for favor, prosperity, revelation, uh, transformation, manifestation, breakthroughs, doors opening, doors closing. Sometimes you got to shut a door. Yeah. Doors closing. Uh, you will get back all that the canker worm store. So, due time has come. Your due time has come. Tell your neighbor, due time has come. Tell your neighbor, it's your season. Glory to God. It's time uh, to get those blue cards off the uh, table. It's time for um, your... Um, vision board to come to fruition. It's time uh, for all of your hopes and dreams to come to life. It's your season for favor in the Lord. It's, it's God's amazing favor for you in 2022. Glory to God. We can't comprehend the enormity of the hand of God. We, not, we may not be able to mentally grasp the work of the Lord's mighty hand, but we see it at work all the time in the universe, on the earth and in our lives. We see it when the sun sets. We see it when the moon shines brightly in the sky at night. We see it when we birth a newborn baby into this world, our mini-me, glory to God. We feel the mighty hand of God when we're lost and in trouble when we are awake and when we are asleep, when we are in his will and when we are out of the will of God. 
He is our mighty counselor and our compass through the storms of this life. He is our tutor through the maze of this world. He shows us the path to righteousness during our Christian journey. Mankind has the constant inclination to think that God has abandoned us when he's absent, when we don't hear his voice, when we can't understand his plan or what he is doing. We think God is absent when we don't recognize the blessings of God working in our lives. When we face life's challenges or hard times, it can feel like God is not with us, and it can feel like he has deserted us. It can be disappointing when our plans don't seem to be working out like we had hoped or the way we had expected. It's discouraging when the path we have chosen does not take us straight to the destination that we pictured in our mind's eye. It's easy to become discouraged. And I uh, reiterate the path that we have chosen, not the path that we ask God if we should take or that he had given us is the path that we have chosen when we get into trouble. That's when we get into trouble, when we make decisions on our own. Yeah. When our trials and brokenness seem to be without purpose or end, we are tempted to veer off course. Sometimes we choose to resort to the issues that have the power to overtake us. Drug abuse, promiscuity, cheating, stealing, lying and backbiting. But we must remain on the course that God has set before us to experience all of God's promises. We assume all of these things, that God has abandoned us, that he's angry with us, or that he has forsaken us. In reality, God is just on. That reminds me, I can think of once when I didn't hear from God. And I was just uh, uh, stupefied that I didn't hear from God. It reminds me of when your mother or your father are quiet. And you think, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, what are they thinking? What are they getting ready to do? Am I about to get it? So in reality, God is just, he's just silent. He told you to do something and you didn't do it, so he's just silent. Even though God is silent, he is still working in our lives. No matter what, God is with us. And I'm reminded of a story in the Bible about Hagar. And Hagar was in such an uncompromising uncom uh, situation. She was a, an Egyptian slave under Sarah and Abraham. And she was uh, given to Abraham by Sarah to come with child because Sarah couldn't have any children. Or she believed that she couldn't have any children. God told her she was going to have some children. But, you know, just like us, she took things into her own hands. And it was a mess. It was a mess. So Hagar becomes pregnant and she gets mouthy. She insults Sarah and says some ugly things, some mean-spirited things, and, and Sarah says some mean-spirited things. So Hagar runs away and she ends up in the desert. And in the midst of her despair and her distress, the angel of the Lord comes to her and he tells her to go back and submit to her um, mistress. And it must have been a really hard thing. Uh, I'm reminded of another story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And King Nebuchadnezzar. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tell King Nebuchadnezzar in no uncertain terms, we are not going to worship your gods. They didn't like their tongue. I don't think they were really rude, but they just let King Chebedinezer know that they had faith 
in their God. And actually, they told him, we're not going to worship your gods. We're not going to bow down to your idols. We're not doing any of that. We have faith in God to rescue us. And if he doesn't rescue us, that'll be okay. We're not worshiping your gods. So King Nebuchadnezzar becomes infuriated. And he says, pump up the fiery furnace seven times hotter than normal. And throw him into the furnace. And so um, the men uh, that were sent to um, put uh, a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, they burned up. Um, the the, um, the um, shackles or the ropes that were on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were burnt away. The Bible says that there's not even a smoke of smell on them. They're not burned. <laughs> and the Bible doesn't say why, but King Nebuchadnezzar gets up and goes to look in the furnace. And he said, there's nothing wrong with them. He was just amazed. And he said, hmm, that looks like there's a God-like creature in there. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. The angel of the Lord was in the fiery yeah. furnace yeah. with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. And so he pulled them out and he wanted them to tell them about this God that they serve. Glory to God. So God is with us in every situation. Yeah. Even when we're sinful, God is with us. Glory to God. The hand of the Lord is upon us. Yeah. Contra contrary to what we think or feel, God is working on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Even when we don't obey his instructions and even when we have very little faith. Mm -hmm. He allows us to face the consequences of our sins when we are disobedient. Then he redirects our path. No matter what our circumstances are, the truth of the matter, God is with us. Yes. The hand of the Lord is upon us. Yes. When we get done with all our foolishness, God points us in the direction of all the blessings that he has in store for us. Yes. Blessing delayed, not denied. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And while I was preparing my sermon, I... Um, came across a, um, I remember a testimony, and I'm not, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase it because I don't want to, I looked for it again so that I could reference it correctly, but I couldn't find it, and I just want to uh, share her testimony, and she, I, I just don't, I don't think at her age, I would have been brave enough to respond to the voice of God and be obedient. Not only was she in tune to the voice of God, she was brave. But she said in her testimony that she was going through some type of distress. And she said one day the voice of God spoke to her and said, get up from here and move to Atlanta. And she moved to Atlanta, and the rest is history. Glory to God. So she was obedient to the voice of God in her distress. We throw off the trajectory of our blessings because we don't listen to God's voice or his instructions. God says, go left, we go right. God says, that's our husband. We say, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, we're like the children of Israel. They were disobedient, so they ended up in a life loop. They just, the, the Bible says that uh, God kept the uh, children of Israel in the desert for 40 years. They just went in circles for 40 years. Glory to God for their disobedience. So sometimes we're like, sometimes we're like the uh, children of Israel. 
we're caught in a life loop because we don't listen to God and we're disobedient. We delay our blessings, not God. God has no intention of keeping something that he has prepared for us away from measure of faith, sanctification, holiness, righteousness, glory, and honor. The Lord freely gives every good thing to those who do what is right. Let's turn our better Bibles to Psalms 84, 11. And it reads, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows grace, favor, and honor. No good thing will he withhold for those who walk upright in righteousness. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 7, 7 through 11. And it reads, ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who keeps asking receives, and he who keeps seeking finds. And to him who keeps on knocking, it will be open. What man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him, instead, give him a snake? If you then, evil, sinful by nature, we're sinful by nature, we have a sinful nature. If you then, evil as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give what is good and advantageous to those who keep on asking? Uh, verses 7 and 8 emphasize persistent, constant prayer. And I've never given this testimony, but this reminded me of my childhood. Uh, I didn't grow up in a house where we went to church. Uh, but my mother had a very strong faith in God. So this story reminds me of consistent prayer. It also reminds me of how we can set a seed, plant a seed uh, in someone and allow God to do the work. I remember, uh, I guess I was about 12 at the time, and one of my older brothers, I'm the baby of the family too, one of my older brothers um, started behaving badly. And at first we really didn't know what was going on with him, but he uh, started using drugs around the age of 15. And that's when I began to pray for him, and I prayed for him, and I prayed for him. And um, even as, a, as I grew up as an adult, he continued to do drugs, and I continued to pray for him. And I would always invite him to church. Some people that you invite to church, they're not coming. They, they have some kind of excuse, especially <coughs> when they're uh, compromised, like he was. But he would always come to church. He would always come to church. Surprisingly, and one uh, Sunday morning, he was uh, uh, he accepted Christ into his life, and he was baptized. But after that, he, he he continued to live the life that he was living, and I continued to pray for him. And it just shows how God works in your darkest hour. God will come through for you. So I said to my mom, I said, Mom, I said. <coughs> Uh, we need to maybe get some funeral insurance on him because at this time he was 50. And I said, but why don't you talk to him? Oh, I can't talk to him. I can't. I said, mom, mom. I said, this, that's your child. I said, you need to tell him that his lungs are old, his heart is old, his brain is old, his kidneys are old, Everything in him is old. And if we, uh, I, I told him, I said, usually 
40, 50, and 60 is usually the time of people who have been doing drugs for a long time. They leave this world. And so I said, you need to, you, you really need to talk to him. I said, well, we do need to get some type of insurance on him. So she did talk to him. And she, he all of a sudden one day says he was off drugs. He didn't go to, he just, he just one of those people that did it cold turkey. And that just shows how if you keep on asking, if you keep on knocking, and if you keep on praying, God will come through. He will surprise you. He will come through. Never once did he ever get upset about me inviting him to church. Never once. He always went. I have known people to uh, get upset with God after getting saved. My life was fine until I got saved. Uh, he never complained about being saved. Actually, he ended up moving out of Detroit to one of the uh, uh, suburbs and became a member of a church. And I mean, he owns a home and he's a truck driver. He's doing really, really well, so I'm really proud of him. Being saved is a benefit of the hand of the Lord. Listen, I would rather be a part of the body of Christ rather than to have to deal with the darkness of this world all on my own. That's right, yeah. That's right, yeah. Having the Holy Spirit in a new heart is better than anything the world could ever give us. Right. Amen. Having the mind of Christ is priceless. We have the mind of Christ if we would only use it. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Being blessed with the mind of Christ is a benefit of being under the sovereignty of God. Yeah. The hand of the Lord refers to the sovereign power of God and the promises and blessings he gives. God's sovereignty over us comes with many precious gifts. It's a benefit package. Mm -hmm. It's better than the benefit package that we get on our job. Glory to God. Some of our benefits are our deliverance from hurt, harm, danger, ruin, and loss. Forgiveness of sin, past, present, and future. Our sin has no effect on our salvation. Our sins are counted against us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our sins have been tossed into the sea of forgetfulness because God removes all of our sin, not just the little sins, but God removes all sin. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Spiritual blessings that are infinitely, infinitely better than any earthly blessing. Our steps are ordered and guided. We are being transformed and sanctified by the hand of the Lord. Another benefit of the hand of the Lord is that God has delivered us from sin and put us into his marvelous life. We have power and authority. The hand, the, Lord, the hand of the Lord means rest for the lost, rest for the disjointed soul, the weary, the brokenhearted, and the downtrodden. We are blessed with a calmness and harmony in our mind, body, and soul. A calmness that supersedes all of our earthly circumstances. We have so much peace that we can give some peace away. Glory to God. We can give some to overflow. And uh, I'm sure that uh, people wonder when when things happen to us how we're in such a, in such peace. And I really believe that my brother came to church because I was at peace. No matter what happened, no matter what state of life I was in, I was at peace. And so people want to know uh, how you get that peace. And they want some of that peace. And it's up to us to show them and tell them about Jesus and how they can have some peace in their life. The hand of the Lord means that we have been given revelation. The unsaved aren't able to see the things that are revealed to us by God. 
We are, we are empowered to see the things that we couldn't see before salvation. He has revealed to us the mystery of his will, his strategy as savior and judge, the purpose and counsel of his will, and our place in that plan. Hallelujah. Because the world can't see what God has revealed to us, the things of God are foolishness to them. Some people think that the Bible is a book of no no myths. They think the Bible is telling you what you can't do. They don't, you know, think of it as a positive uh, influence. They think of it as a book that tells us what we can't do. So they think of it as a book of no no's, myths, hogwash, fables, and foolishness. They think God is an extraterrestrial. Scientists believe that God. Scientists believe that if God is not a myth, he is an alien. They have been trying to disprove the Bible for years and that there is no God. I watch a lot of uh, different uh, documentaries and one of them is uh, a Ancient Aliens. I guess you'd call it a docudrama, not a, uh, <laughs> not a um, documentary. Uh, one of the programs I watched said that they trace all of mankind back to one single woman in Africa. They believe that this place could be the Garden of Eden. And uh, it's now known as Botswana, Africa, in the Kalahari, Kala, yeah, Kalahari region. I was reading something for research and I came across some information that said that an archaeologist found the royal sarcophagus of King Hiram of the Ball, which is, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Tier Lebanon. This is the same King Hiram that Solomon traded with to build the uh, Solomon's temple, the temple for the Lord. This is in 2 Chronicles 2. The world always wants to debunk God the Bible and the devil, which is dangerous. People feel that if they can't see God, that he doesn't exist, and that he isn't a real and living God. Fortunately for us, there is a God who called and chose us before the foundation of the world. This is the hand of God in our lives. Our God has a plan for us. We don't have to sleep with one eye open. Because we, we're because we serve a 24-7 God. He's omnipresent and he never sleeps and he never fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have security in our minds, soul, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and financial, financially, no matter how things appear. No matter what's going on around in the world, we're at peace. The Bible tells us that the soul of man is in the hands of the Lord and that he has control over all those that rule and have authority. When we hear the hand of the Lord mentioned, it points to God's sovereign power and his providence. God is in control. And I appreciate God being in control. The world would say, I thank my lucky stars, but I thank God that man is not in control Amen. of the world. Amen. Glory. Man has been given authority on earth, but God has the final say. You might be thinking, uh, okay, I get all that, but I have some bills to do. There's political unrest and social unrest. I've been through a major pandemic. pandemic. There's a war in Ukraine and in the other parts of the world, global warming. Inflation is at its peak. Gas is high at the fuel pump, and the cost of everything is getting costlier every day. You're asking, what does the sovereign hand of God mean for me? How many have worked uh, during the pandemic? That's the hand of God. Lord, it means God, the hand of the Lord means that God has no earthly limitation. He's not bound by time or space. Glory to God. He's not even bound by our lack of faith. Glory to God. 
It means that everything that goes on in the universe is under God's influence and authority. The, man, the mighty hand of God is with you. It's a protection and a shield. The hand of the Lord is fierce against our enemies. The hand of the Lord means that we have a mighty Jehovah rod to lead and to guide us. The, he is the shepherd of our souls. It means redemption and sanctification. It means we are the beneficiaries to the blessings of Abraham. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. We have the peace of God, a God kind of peace. That's what the hand of the Lord is. So you say, okay, uh, you're concerned about the economy, the pandemic, and global warming. I assure you that God's sovereign hand has it all under his divine control. Because of God's sovereignty, we should be like the tree planted by the water. It doesn't sway when the storms come. Um, it is not bothered by the heat or drought. It's not, it, it, it never ceases to bear fruit. And it's, it prospers in spite of everything that's going on around it. That's what I'm talking about. The hand of the Lord gives a, a godly con conviction. Yeah. Glory to God. No matter how things appear, the world is not out of control. It doesn't matter what we see, think, or feel. It doesn't matter what, what we read online in the newspaper or what the news reporters say or the naysayers. God does not slumber or sleep. Hallelujah. God knows what we are in need of. He hears our voices. That's the hand of the Lord. Yes. That's what the hand of the Lord means for us today. And you'll be surprised that um, people are scared. You know, I talked to a man on the job, and he was afraid uh, because America was speaking up to uh, and making statements to the Soviets and helping Ukraine that um, um, they were going to, he was worried that they were going to bomb us. And so it's good to, for you to put people at ease and to uh, share your Christianity with them. I told him, I said, you know what? I said, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. I said, because God has everything under his divine control. Yeah. I'm closing out. We need to recognize the hand of God moving in our lives. First, we must familiarize ourselves with God's word, which explains who, is, who God is and what he does. And it tells us about who man is. The Bible is similar to an instruction manual, which helps us to understand a particular device or a particular thing. Reading God's word helps us to understand how God works and how we should respond to him. Second, we must communicate with God through prayer. prayer. We can ask God for wisdom. We can ask God to help us recognize his hand and how to submit to the hand of the Lord. We can thank him for how his hand has guided us. We can ask him to help us learn what he is teaching us, whatever lesson his hand is bringing us through. Third, we must trust God. Just as a son often rebels against the guidance of his father, not trusting his judgment or not accepting his discipline, we also fight against the hand of God. Oh, why did you do that? Uh, uh, why, no, why did you allow this to happen? Oh, oh no, I can't do that. I, I, can't, I can't marry Nene. Uh, isn't there another way? Glory to God. So we often fight against what God is telling us, his instruction. It's not wrong to question God in a spirit of humility. It is wrong, wrong to doubt God or the quality of his plan. Many times in our lives, we make an ordeal worse by not trusting 
and, and obeying God and by not learning the intended lesson. God is with us and he is involved in our daily lives. God is working when we're asking questions. God is at work when we're trying to figure things out. God's hand is at work in the storms of our life. We must have faith that God's hand will proactively lead us. God's hand never fails. Commune with God in prayer. Avail yourself to his voice. Be guided by the Holy Spirit. Humble yourself before the Lord and trust in him. Don't turn away from God's will for your life. Allow the hand of the Lord to guide you. The hand of the Lord is a symbol of God's presence in our lives, his guidance, his instruction, and his discipline. When we recognize and, and accept the presence of the hand of the Lord, we will uh, be able to follow his lead through the study of God's word, a strong prayer life, and a loving and abiding relationship with God. We can learn to recognize and trust and enjoy the hand of the Lord moving in our lives. For those of you here today, I want to give you the opportunity to experience the hand of the Lord in your life. If you are here today and you would like to uh, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can raise your hand and uh, someone will uh, tend to you. Uh, if you would like to experience the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, you, we can do that for you today also. And if you have not, um, if you don't yet have a church home, I welcome you to be a member. I highly recommend Men House of Faith Christian Center. For those of you on Facebook, I would love to invite you to uh, experience the presence of the Lord in your life. So if you are, would like to be saved, uh, I would like for you to repeat this prayer after me. Father, I believe that I am a sinner. I'm sorry, sorry, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and took all of my sins away. I confess Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, and I make him Lord of my life. Father, thank you for saving me and forgiving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to um, invite you or convince you to um, find a church home of your own so that you can experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I will now turn everything over to my pastor. The hand of the Lord. Awesome. I was um, watching as I ministered. There's a scripture that came to mind that I want to share, uh, especially for those who watch this by Facebook, some other social media outlet. It said uh, Isaiah chapter 59 and um, verses 1. Through verse 3, I think this is a message that we are facing in our society, in our world today, of all that's going on. 
people will tell you what they think, they will tell you what they feel, they will give you their opinions, they will give their viewpoints, but rarely do you hear them tell you what the word says in situations. And after hearing that message, I think we need to put the word says in proper perspective of what's happening in our world today. And so again, you're watching this on Facebook. I hope you hit like and hit share because this is an awesome word you just received about the hand of the Lord. It was so rich, so impacted in your life. But I just want to read your scripture whether you have it in your printed text or whether you have it, um, you know, your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 to verse 3. I'm reading this from the New King James Version. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not short. That it cannot save. Nor is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. So the Lord's hand is, is there, it's, it's, it's available. His, his, his ear is, is there so he can listen. So he makes himself available. The Lord's hand, he's not holding it back at all. He wants to extend it. But watch this. It says, but. Now, the word but is a, is a contraction, which means it like counts about everything that's said previously. That's from God's perspective. But let's look at it from people's perspective. He says, but your iniquities have been separated you from your God. You know, next uh, thing about this, you know, on uh, next Monday, this Independence Day, and uh, people will be singing, you know, God bless America. God bless America. That's what they sing. God, we want you to bless America. But God says, verse 2, he says, your iniquities have separated you from your God. So how can a person sing God bless America when their sin separates you from God? He says, and your sins have hidden his face from you. Oh my goodness. See, well, I want you to understand what's going on in our world today. God loves you. Yeah, he does. You can't do anything about that. But your sins hid his face, he says, so that he will not hear. Oh my goodness. You mean to tell me that my sins can, can, can keep me? Y'all can hear what I have to say. I'm just reading y'all. And people will say, God bless America. What sin did God, what is he, when a person repents? When they simply say, God, I messed up. I want to turn back to you. Oh, God, he's, he's waiting for that. He loves that. His hand is not short. His ear is not here. But when people continue in their sin and in their iniquities, because all the stuff you hear, See, everything you hear about the news and so forth and all, and I'm going to be talking about, let me go and put a plug in now. Let me go and stop right now. This Wednesday night, you don't want to miss our power, okay? You know, make sure you write it down because we're going to talk about what the Supreme Court ruling did and why Oprah upset. For, not from my feelings, not from my opinions, not from my thinking, but from the word of God. So you I want you to go home and tell all your friends, all of them, send it out now, blast out now, Wednesday night, you want to be on the call, House of Great Power call. So make sure you tell mama them and daddy them, baby brother them, baby sister them, cookie them, chiquita them, contact all the hymns. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, if they don't want the truth, don't turn, don't listen. If they don't hear the truth, tell me, no, you don't want this. That's a similar from this tonight. You don't want this because he's going to speak the truth. And we know the truth will make us what? Three. He says, for your hands are defiled with blood. I, I'm just reading. Hands defiled with blood. 
And people are upset because they want to do what they want to do. I'm talking about what God says. He says, and your fingers with iniquity. He says, your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. Verse 4. He says, no one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. What is it? Nobody wants to, nobody wants to get the truth. They want to, this is what I want to do. This, this is my body. I do I want to do what I want to. See, we're going to talk about that. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil, bring forth iniquity. She talked about the hand of the Lord. And God's hand wants to extend, extend to us. But when people want to do what they want to do and X God out, and they wonder why they get in the situation they do. Bible says, Lord, my times are in your hands. And I put my life in the hands of God. Not in the hands of the government. Not in the hands of people. Not in the hands of the president. Not in the hands of what people think about me. My, my, see, my time's not in their hands. My time's in the hands of the Lord. And the next time people tell you what they think, what it is, just ask them one question. What does God say about me? Well, then we have to uh, tell them what God, tell them what the word says. Tell them what scripture your feelings is based on. Tell them what feelings. I can tell you my feelings are based on the hand of the Lord. That's why she talked about you got a peace. <laughs> you, you have a peace about yourself. See, when your hands are in the Lord, you're at peace. But when your hands are not in the Lord, oh my, everything upset, so far and all. We're going to march. We're going to protest, you know. And, you know, we're going to go, go, you know, I mean, we, we go, go camp out at the Supreme Court Justice Homes and everything. Tell them how we feel. Thank you for that word. I mean, it's a timely word. Yeah. Because I, I was listening. Not only you, but the Spirit of God talked about the hand of the Lord. And God says, my hand is going to show up in the midst of everything going on. And my pastors always tell me, every time I would greet him, he would always say this. Brother Rodney, you still on the Lord's side? <laughs> and saints, I want to tell you, I want everybody look at me now. If I look at it, it's coming to a time now you got to get a decision whose side you're going to be on. Yeah. Yeah. This family may not like you. They may not understand you. They might disassociate yourself. That's okay. Because Jesus says, my family is those who hear and obey the word. Yeah. That's my mother. That's my sister. And that's my brother. Yes. Or you're going to side with opinion or what you hear in the news, or what you read in the newspaper, or what people think about it. I'm going to stay with the hand of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be God. We still on Facebook. Are we still on Facebook? We still on Facebook. I'm oh, good. I'm glad. But I want y'all to hear this list. Go over it. Hit like and hit share. Listen to it over and over and over again. Send it to your family with a friend what you just heard of the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. So while you're singing God Bless America, I want you to see, hey, the, do I have a hand of the Lord on my life? Praise the Lord. Lord God, I swear, thank you. Thank you for that word. Thank you for what you oh, Listen, we're going to go home and we're going to worship the Lord, praise the Lord through our offertory period in time. And if you need an offering on the Lord, go ahead and raise your hand. Thank you again uh, for participating and receiving this God's word. And that's what, what so if you're watching this if you need an offer the Lord, just raise your hand. We want to go ahead and just give you opportunity to show into what you just heard. Sow into the hand of the Lord. That have protection, guidance, all those things, direction, the hand of the Lord is upon you as well. 
Praise the Lord. Now, if you're watching this by Facebook and uh, you want to also participate in what you just heard, there are three ways that you can give. You can give through text giving by downloading the Al House of Faith Christian Center. Uh, do that. Second way you give it is online giving. You can go to our webpage, which is House of Faith Christian Center.org. Go ahead where it says donate and give. And uh, you follow instructions and you can just go and give. Uh, praise the Lord. Just use your card, use your credit card, your debit card. And I would say everything is secure. We don't give your information out to the third party, anything like that. You know? You know, or you say, you know what, I just want to give the mail. Uh, can I write a check? Yeah, you can write a check. Make it out to House of A Christian Center, H O L C C. Uh, send it to Post Office Box 985, 985, Smyrna, Tennessee, zip code 37167. Praise the Lord. You know, you say, well, Pastor, what about send a blank check? Yeah, you can. Just make sure you sign it. And whatever you put on there, make sure you get covered. All right, praise the Lord. <laughs> and we'll pray about what to put in there. All right, <laughs> hallelujah. But uh, you can give, you know. And again, just remember uh, the gifts that leaves your hand and never leaves the earth. You're sowing good seed on good ground. We just thank you, praise the Lord, for participating uh, in our offertory prayer that you have. And again, our tax. Uh, I'll you give a tax deductible and I greatly appreciate it. So this is what we want to do. We're going to pray for you right now, the offering, you know, that you have. And you said, do I have to give? No, I don't have to give. I get to give. It's an opportunity for prosperity, you know, as well. And so again, you also have to offer them. We're going to go ahead and hold them up right now. And uh, praise the Lord. Glory to God. And uh, we thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have a, an individual who are not part of our church. They just believe in what we sow. And they sow once a month to a House of Faith Christian Center and the missions that we do. We appreciate that. So, again, if you want to partner with the House of Faith Christian Center, please do that. And the uh, information that you can go with to do it as well. So, that's what I offer. Father, we want to thank you and honor you for this day. We love you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the hand of the, the, hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. And we thank you for all what you're doing. That you reach out unto us, Father. Two thousand years ago, the hand of the Lord reached out to us and gave us the greatest gift we could ever receive in Jesus. And we thank you that the hand of the Lord was upon Jesus and all that He did. And that same hand is on that was on Jesus is on us today. And the same hand be upon our offerings that we have right now. So, Father God, we sow right now to the kingdom of God and the hand of the Lord for protection, for guidance, for comfort, for all these things you have. Thank you, Father, for the hand of the Lord. And, Father, as we sow right now, we believe in, Father God, things, great things, Father God, jobs, better jobs, raises, bonuses, uh, gifts, Father God, deliverances, healings, prosperity, peace of mind, answered prayers, Father God, walking in victory, knowing we are more than conquerors because of the hand of the Lord. And so we thank you. We praise you, Father God. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you so kindly again for participating in our offertory. We just love God. We love money to give God's money back to the kingdom of God and to sow it. And we want to thank you for being a part and partner with us, you know, as well. Thank you for this word. Thank you for being a part of our worship experience today. Uh, again, and we take the blessings of God upon you uh, as you celebrate all the things that God is doing in the name of Jesus. And again, I, I tell you now, don't forget, Wednesday night, you will be a power, part of the year. Uh, our power call uh, that we'll be doing and uh, pray so go ahead and tell everybody at 6 30 uh, central standard time 7 30 uh, p.m eastern standard time 4 30 p.m pacific standard time praise the lord that we'll be dealing again with the supreme court decision and uh, again why so many people are upset with that but how god said as well so praise the lord so they got some offerings in here here we go got some praise the lord don't leave us out. Don't leave us out. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, again, thank you, Facebook family, for watching and all this uh, worship experience in the name of Jesus, Father. Again, I'm Pastor Ronald D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. House of Faith Christian Center, uh, located in beautiful Smyrna, Tennessee. Uh, we have a threefold vision that is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. 
House of Faith Christian Center, we are a ministry of excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. I want to leave you these familiar words. Again, remember Jesus, Lord, and continue to show compassion in your action. And we'll see you next time. God bless you, and have a great day. Amen.